Hey fun fans, it's Evan here. I'm with Team 9496 Link. This is a team that has had an incredible rookie year and they're looking to have an incredible second year as well. We'll be looking at their robot, their end effector, their unique programming LEDs, and their really unique deep climb. I think they'll have a fantastic season this year coming right after their fantastic season last year. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. All right, so Nathan, if you can tell me a little bit about your end effector, your climber, and what all went into building this. Yeah, so basically, uh, starting out for the end effector, you actually went through a couple of iterations. It's actually uh, V3 of the end effector. Um, what we saw was basically a fixed angle end, end effector. We like fixed angles. Um, so basically, the coil just passes through here at a fixed angle and it stays there and it's held there until it's shot out. And that's pretty much it. Very simple end effector. Um, we, have a, we have a gearbox right here that controls it. Um, this belt controls the top part and this belt goes down into the shaft that goes back into this gearbox that controls the rest of it. And these belts across it uh, alternate the, the front wheels. All right, and if you can tell me a little bit about your elevator as well. Is this a custom elevator? Yes, it is a custom elevator uh, from Elliot from 111, uh, Wild Stang. Um, and he did help us uh, with the process of actually making the elevator. He gave us guidance and it was his design and it was actually very useful for him to actually help us in that. Um, and with the elevator, yeah. elevator, it's actually pretty fast. Uh, we actually uh, geared it up a little bit to make it go faster. We added more power to the motors by eight, eight, 100%, I think it was. And it does go up to L4 pretty fast if Jimmy likes that. It's, it's, in person, it's very, very loud. I don't know how loud it's going to be on camera, but it is very loud going up and down. And honestly, it's pretty accurate. Um, and again, Elliot, thank you uh, for helping us out uh, with the elevator. Awesome. And so what made you guys go with the funnel and intaking from the human player station over having a ground intake? Mostly because we didn't want to like reach stuff over the bumper and and the complexity it would have, and just knowing the simplicity of just having it coming straight from the source would be a uh, beneficiary for autos and and no need for rotation and just easier function. Awesome. Yeah, you guys have really emphasized the simple, simple but a very effective through your two years. You got a, a Samuel, if you can go ahead and talk a little bit more about the deep climb you have. Yeah, I'd love to. So right here is our deep climb. It's inspired from 8044. And basically this arm, these cables, and then a Kraken down there going into a gearbox run by this chain right here. So you wanna drop it right there. It drops down. Our funnel comes down right there. So that, uh, it gets out of the way of the, it gets out of the way of the chain right here when it comes up. This would come up on hold the chain. We can do it real quick. It comes there. Now hold it. Chain will be right here. And the sides of the, of the actual cage go on this cat tongue right here. It works great. And it's avoiding everything. And this right here, when it's down, is a guide for where the, chain, the actual cage goes in. And you line it up like that and we're ready to go. Awesome. This is a really cool design. I haven't seen many like it. So what made you guys go with this design? Did you take inspiration from anyone? Yeah, 8044. And I mean, it looks great from what, the, what we've seen with them. And it fit our design perfectly. We knew we'd be able to fit it in. So far, it's worked great at this event and over Wolford. So it's one thing to make it robust. It's another thing to make it fast. So through software, we've automated most scoring processes on this robot. 
So this robot's controlled by two joysticks, uh, these four buttons, and two triggers. So these buttons set what state, what level the elevator's in. So L1, L2, L3, L4, and then right branch or left branch. And then the robot does it all, it aligns, it scores, it backs up. And the only thing that driver has to do is make it to the source. Same thing for algae. So um, it knows that when it has an out um, piece or if it doesn't, so it'll automatically go for algae and line up for that. All right. That, that's really cool. For Auto, do you have a sensor to tell when you've gotten a coral from the human player station? So we, um, so at Gainesville, we had uh, proximity sensors, the like the cheap Amazon ones that you get. But we, we had a lot of issues with those, with it getting false readings and everything, and just ruining our state machine. So we switched to CTRE CAN ranges, which is a, a time of flight distance sensor, but we're just basically using them as proximity sensors. So they detect when a coral is like right here, so you don't okay. get any bad readings from this like poly ever flying or anything. And they've been like really robust so far through this comp. Awesome. So you use these to detect when the coral's gone auto and wait until that's happened to score, right? Yeah. So when this first sensor's triggered, the state machine says we have a coral, and then it starts flying to the reef. And then once it hits this sensor, it's ready to score it. And then once it drops, it goes to the next auto path and gets another piece. Hopefully, by DCMP, we'll have it to four pieces, but right now it's at three and a half. Awesome. This is a super impressive robot you came up with. Thank you for sharing it for everyone, and I wish you guys the best of luck during your competition. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or a $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details.